is good is DJ the Great here, and I'm gonna be dropping another video on you today with my um with the uh, smart money concepts trading strategy that I use personally. Um, that I can um that I I, I say it brings about eighty to ninety percent percent accuracy. So if you want to um if you want to um have more videos like this um where maybe you're gonna learn something from me explaining the strategy um that might add to your trading or you know it might be something that you've been missing you know just having it a strategy so i'm gonna get started right away if you want more videos like this go ahead and drop a like subscribe and um share the video with somebody that you know that might uh need help with their trading that you know so the first thing i do typically because i enter on the 15 minute <coughs> excuse me <coughs> All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is um, start off on the four hour time frame, right? So start off on the four hour time frame, and then um, you're going to look for um, overall structure, right? So I'm zooming out real quick on the H4 because it's gonna be my higher time frame reference. And you can see this is a very large impulse move that happened, and it's been um, declining for quite some time, essentially since uh, January 31st, 2022 at around 7 p.m., right? So zooming in to current price action, right? Zooming into current price action, I do see a bearish order block here. So I'm going to draw that in because it's only been it's been touched just one time, and there could be a possibility that it could come back up to um, it could come back up to um, this order block to retest it, right? So coming back down, and on top of that, on the H4, all of the external liquidity. Uh, on this big impulse move was taken, all these old lower highs were taken. That would be external liquidity. If you want to know more about external and internal liquidity, it will change the game for you. Go ahead and drop a like once again, subscribe, and I'll drop a video on internal and external liquidity as a part of the how to get sniper entries using order block series. Moving on, um, we have a nice bearish engulfing or bullish engulfing right here. And I like to personally start off on the H4 and just mark up my zones because um, it helps you get like a framework of um, where price is going. So we had a, on this impulse move, bullish engulfing right here, bullish order block and another um, bearish order block below here. Let me see. Yeah, another bearish order block below. So that's the area we are currently trading in, all right? So after that, I see that prices came down, created um, external liquidity, came up, took that external liquidity, which would be all of the lower highs. If you're looking for shorts, external liquidity would be all of the lower highs on the impulse move down, right? For every impulse move down, there's gonna be a retracement that comes and takes at least the mass majority of the external liquidity. In this case, it took literally all of it. So it'd be all of the lower highs on this impulse move here. Boom, boom, boom. So with that being said, Great British Pound Australian dollar is overall bearish. Um, this is something that's a part of my trading strategy. Is it is called a prime market terminal. If you do want access to prime market terminal and to learn how to have a data based approach to your strategy, um, go ahead and sign up for the learner earn, which is down in the description. Also, I have um, prime market terminal links down in the description that you can also sign up for as well. So, 61% of retailers are buying this pair, which would be instantive to short the pair because you always trade against the retailers, right? And that's just one piece of data right there. Um, so after that, I'm gonna drop down to the 15 minutes to see how that H4 mitigation reflected, right? So I'm noticing that um, there was this big impulse move, but there was no external liquidity taken on this impulse move. And as you can see, right, for every impulse move that happens, there's gonna be external liquidity being grabbed. See, impulse move happened, all of that external liquidity was grabbed. In this case, since we are shorting this from a higher time frame order block, I do expect essentially all of the external liquidity to be taken all the way up to here, right? So one thing I do look for is um, a change of character. And what a change of character is, is showing you that banks are done chasing um, a certain type of liquidity, which would be buy side or external liquidity, and now they're chasing internal liquidity. <coughs> that being said, we are going to <coughs> mark up excuse me guys we're going to mark up the change of character which would be when price trades below any swing major swing low right so that's the change of character right here is when this is the latest swing low right here right and price traded below that and when i'm looking for price when price is doing this right coming up into my higher time frame zone i am looking for 
I am looking for um, Price to be coming into my zone. And then after that does happen, I drop down to my 15 minute time and I look for this change of character confirmation. So essentially it's draw up your zones, um, your order blocks. I typically, like I said, on the H4, will draw in an order block on the impulse move here and um, kind of trap in price. It has um, just these two to um, trade in. You can either sell from this um, supply zone up here or bearish order block, however you view it and however you were taught, or it can come down to the H4 demand. That's all I can do. So you drop down to 15 minutes for reference, and this is essentially what I'm looking for, change of character. Once I have the change of character, that's showing me that banks are going from chasing internal or external liquidity up top, like I showed you, to external liquidity on bottom. All these old lower highs are going to be external liquidity on this whole impulse move right here. On this buy that happened. That's all external liquidity is going to be grabbed. So um, <clears throat> with that being said, price is going to come up and <clears throat> come back to the original um, bearish engulfing or institutional footprint that happened before <clears throat> the change of character, right? So a lot of people are like, well, which one? Well, let's do some, let's do some looking real quick. This one right here, right, was created. Where is it at? This one right here was created, right? And then price mitigated that one perfectly. Price mitigated that one perfectly for a sniper entry. And actually, let me zoom in for you guys real quick. Price mitigated that perfectly for a sniper entry um, down to the pip and then dropped. So this is that another small impulse move and then external liquidity was grabbed to um, basically mitigate that order block for a sniper entry. But to be safe, I would have probably waited for an order block to close inside of my zone after that mitigation. This is where I would have gotten in personally myself because that's a bit too outside of my zone, I would think that price was trading above. So the next step is to go and look at the mitigation, exactly where the mitigation happened before it dropped, as you see on the higher time frame, um, and look for the change of character, right? If you have the change of character, you're going to find the bullish candle, the, the bearish order block inside <clears throat> that happened as a result of the mitigation on the H4. That should cause a change of character. So this wouldn't be the candle. This would be the candle. Since the candle mitigates the order block, this order block to me is no longer valid. So we're going to put that there. That order block is no longer valid. This is going to be the order block because this is the order block that shot down and actually caused the old lower high, right? The old low to be taken out with the change of character. That's showing that they've taken sell side because they just took sell side. So now we know they're chasing sell side because look, they took out these two old equal lows and all of the equal lows down to here, essentially just clearing the um, the uh, internal liquidity on the way down, this impulse move, right? So on the way down, you just learn that whenever there's an impulse move down, they create um, they create external liquidity and they have to come up for that every time. So obviously what I would be looking for and on Monday, and this is live analysis right in front of you, I'm actually likely gonna take this. I'm gonna be looking for price to come up and take all that external liquidity basically to mitigate this. And then from there, price will continue. This is all I do over and over again. Every time I'm trading, I look for internal and external liquidity confirmations as well as um, you know, um, actual higher time frame, supply and demand, and or the blocks, depending on how you are viewing it. So if I were to take this trade, it would be right there because I already have my change of character confirmation. And I'd be going for like a one to three or a one to four. Those are my two ratios that I um, find in my trading plan that end up being the best ratios, right? So I repeat this over and over again. Higher time frame reference, um, drawing your zones. Once price reaches your higher time frame reference, you wait for a change of character. And once you have the change of character, you wait for all your internal or external liquidity to be taken, depending on what you're doing. And essentially, limit order at the retest. And you can even use Fibonacci for confluence, right? If you really wanted to, you can use Fibonacci for better confluence, right? On the trade, you can add more to the trade if you would like. And if we're really going from impulse move directly, right, from top to bottom, this would be a perfect 79% rejection. So you have some Fibonacci confluence there as well, right? If you want to learn more about my trading strategy, my SMC concepts, once again, drop a like, 
subscribe to the channel. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. It's just showing you a bit of how I look into the charts when I am looking and what type of confirmations that I'm looking for from an intraday perspective.